beat five ranked teams, while you have OU who beat one and Alabama who's beaten three, and just the dominance that the Florida State Seminoles have presented so far. And they'll look to continue that dominance here today against the Rattlers, and they will turn, Tiffany, to Emma Wilson, the junior from Dallas, Georgia, getting another start this season. Yeah, we talk about Emma Wilson, who she's gotten a little experience under her belt. You're going to see us a lot of things down in the zone, maybe flip that change here and there, um, and looking to get a, a lot of ground balls and keep the Rattlers off balance. We are underway here in Tallahassee. Here's the numbers for Wilson, ERA at 1.62 through eight and two thirds. And this ball is secured by Josie Muffley at short. Seminoles have rotated Muffley at short with Brooke Blankenship, a freshman, and it is Muffley, the transfer from Tulsa, getting the nods here today for Bonnie Alameda in Team 39. That was Kiana Watson leading off for the Rattlers. This is Malkayla Irvis. Irvis missed some time this past weekend, is back in the lineup, making her seventh appearance this season, her sixth start. Keep an eye on Naya Morgan, the transfer from Stetson, who has been dynamite in her first year in the SWAC and with the Rattlers. 304 batting average, three doubles, three RBI as well. Yeah, and I know the Rattlers are going to be looking to get some people on, move them around, so you can give Naya the opportunity to knock in some runs. So that's probably something that Coach Orr is looking from Irvis to do. Irvis, one of four Rattlers on the roster who played in Tallahassee the last time you and I were here, Tiffany, a couple of years ago. And this her 13th at bat of the season. It's been a bit of a slow start for Irvis, who has come in to score a couple of times, has earned a few walks, but has yet to record her first hit. Ground ball here to first. Pulled to Leonard, she steps on the bag, and that's a couple of quick outs for Emma Wilson and the Seminoles. We'll take a look at the Seminoles defensively, and there are some substitutions, some younger players getting the nod, like Hallie Waycaser out in left field, joining Janai Kerr and Haley Harding. Cheryl Muffley, Flaherty, Leonard around the infield, Wilson, the pitcher, and Kyle Lepresti gets the nod behind the dish for the Seminoles. So here is Naya Morgan, a player with tremendous upside that head coach Constance Orr is incredibly excited about today. And rightfully so. I mean, she's pretty much stepped in as a transfer and provided a little bit of pop and power um, to the Rattlers lineup, and that's just probably what Coach Orr is looking for. We had mentioned the 304 batting average, three RBI, the OPS at 819 for the on base plus her slugging ability in that 800 range. Does a little bit of everything for the Rattlers offensively, is a lockdown as a catcher as well. A lot of youngsters on this team, so the leadership too that she brings from Stetson, also an added benefit. Yeah, and you can see it right here in her at bat. I mean, just really working Emma Wilson, seeing, making her throw a lot of pitches, seeing pitches. Um, she's worked her way into a hitter's count at three and one. Co leads the team in hits with seven. And just caught a piece of that one to make it full. Just 11 pitches to this point for Wilson, looking to record the strikeout. Instead, it'll be a walk to Naya Morgan, who now equals her strikeouts with four walks on the season. And yeah, that was a veteran at bat right there. She was very patient. She made Emma Wilson throw pitches, like I mentioned earlier, and drew the walk for her team. Two out walk, never know what can happen with two outs. And that'll bring up Destiny Cuevas, the junior from Haines City, Florida, swinging through the off speed for strike one.
Mentioned the seven runs that Florida A&M has scored this season. When you look at the RBI totals, it's Morgan and Cuevas who are responsible for five of those seven at three and four in the order. Ball off the plate makes it one and two to Cuevas. The starting shortstop for Florida A&M. And here come the K-Time chants. <laughs> and Tiffany, this is oh so important too, just to see as many pitches as you possibly can for your teammates who have yet to step into the batter's box. Yeah, absolutely. Your job, and you know, especially early in the game, is to make that pitcher throw as many pitches because you can take that information back to your team and you can take that ball over the center field wall. Destiny Cuevas and the Rattlers strike first. Wow. That's a great piece of hitting right there by Cuevas. I mean, a one-two count. Um, I'm sure Emma Wilson's gonna wanna get that pitch back, but what a great job by Cuevas just taking that pitch, something over the plate and sent it over the wall to give her Rattlers a 2-0 lead. The first home run by anybody in this Rattler lineup this season. Yeah, and you see that pitch there that Emma Wilson threw up in the zone. You know, something she probably wanted to get that a little bit more off the plate. You don't want to give the opportunity to the other team to score runs, but good job by Clavis there. What a start for Florida A&M. And the point we were just talking about, <laughs> see as many pitches as you can and get that information to the rest of the dugout. Well, that's some valuable information as well as Brandis Boatwright grounds out to Sydney Sherrill to retire the side. But what a side it was for Florida A&M. The Rattlers up 2-0 heading to the bottom of the first. What a start for Florida A&M and their shortstop Destiny Cuevas. A home run in the top of the first to plate herself and Naya Morgan who walked right before her. And so now Brandis Boatwright, the senior from Winter Haven, Florida steps into the circle with a two run lead in her pocket, Tiff. Yeah, I mean, I don't think she can ask for anything more coming from the left side. I mean, you see her stats there with two starts this season. Um, she's had one loss, but I think she's came in and gave her team an opportunity to win and stay in some ball games. And I think Coach Orr just wants her to compete today. Um, so I think from Boatwright, that's what you'll get, especially from her being an upper class. And to your point, Tiffany, Coach Orr told us really the methodology for her with her pitchers and the conversations that she's had. She said, first of all, there's been a lot of conversations, but then she said the primary one is not too different than a whole lot of the conversations that you see across the country. Figure out what the umpire strike zone is, and once you figure that out, work the corners, and especially against this team, work down in the zone, and Hallie Wakecaser nearly ended up out of the park. What a play in center field, however, by Mia Blassengang. Now that is number four. Yeah. That's Nine why you want to stay down in the zone. Fire me up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the Rattlers are absolutely hype right now, which I can't blame them. Good swing right there by Waycaser, but I mean, you can't just do anything but tip your hat there. Great play in center field. That'll bring up Janai Kerr. Swing and a miss for the freshman. Mac Leonard, the headliner for Florida State in St. Pete hit 471, scored three runs, included a double and an RBI. Leonard, Harding, Edenfield in the middle of that order, as powerful a trio as you will find anywhere in the country. Yeah, I, I mean, it's very speechless there when you mention those three. Um, the power that they've shown so far is just absolutely outstanding. Janai Kerr also has left the yard this season and it's really a difficult lineup to navigate around. 
because where do you hide? You've got Janai Kerr going opposite field for a base knockdown. Yeah, yeah, it's very hard. I mean, especially as a pitcher, that's something that's always in the back of your mind when you face a lineup like Florida State, one through nine, and even you know a few that come off the bench um, who can go yard, who can knock base hits, doubles. Um, it's something that you're always thinking about as a pitcher. I'm trying not to be too careful, trying not to leave um, a lot of the ball over the white. That brings up Mac Leonard. And Hallie Wakehaser took an elevated pitch and nearly sent one out. Mac Leonard, a player who can certainly do so as well. Hit 425 last season at Illinois State. We talked about the numbers in St. Pete. Also leads this club offensively with a 536 batting average. And Janai Kerr is punched out at second. Yeah, you see Janai Kerr here. Try to steal second. Not having any of it. That's kind of a close, close play right there. Pretty good jump by Kerr. I don't know if the umpire was in a bad position, but it looks like she got into second, but neither here or there. Blue set out, nothing to argue. Two outs. Destiny Cuevas with the fireworks in the top of the first and a few <laughs> more in the bottom of the first, the shortstop. I don't know, thus far it's been a Naya Morgan, Destiny Cuevas show for the Rattlers. For sure. <laughs> There is Naya Morgan. Has really done a good job of taking command of her pitchers, according to Coach Orr. Yeah, yeah and I think that just kind of is a testament to her leadership that we talked about. Um, having come over from Stetson and, and playing um, some collegiate ball and really just learning how to take control of her pitchers, settle them down, rein them back in, um, that's a testament to her leadership. And you also saw that as she threw out Janai Kerr there, I'm um, stealing, so. And that was a whole lot of speed off the base paths that Florida a and was able to eliminate. And with Mac Leonard now reaching on a base hit up the middle, Florida State's second hit here of the bottom of the first. That now gives way to Kaylee Harding. Harding, the hero against UCLA. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The sophomore from Murfreesboro, Tennessee recording the double in the bottom of the eighth to I mean, lift the Seminoles to a 4-3 win. Yeah, and even if you're not a Seminole fan, just as a softball fan, um, that game against UCLA and Florida State was just so electrifying. And I mean, just, yay, softball is back. Like, that's how I felt as I was watching it. Like, yay, softball is back. Um, and just to see that those two teams compete, give you those postseason feels so early. And there is Coach Lonnie Alameda, and this is her 14th season with the Seminoles. And this season certainly off to a tremendous start here in Tallahassee. Boatwright off to a pretty darn good start as well. This ball's popped up but misplayed. Leonard's going to be safe over at third. And Brandis should have been out of the first right there. Yeah, absolutely. Mis misplay right there, dropping that fly ball. And I, I mean, I think, again, you talk about the leadership from Morgan. You see her step out in front of the plate, kind of rally her team, pull them back in. But I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. You see Mac Leonard rounding, rounding second. Thought about scoring, but probably a good thing that she held up there because, I, I don't know, a good throw probably would have had her out. And so that brings up Michaela Edenfield. Off-speed offering to Edenfield. Freshman out of Sneeds, Florida. Majoring in business here at Florida State. Also majoring in bombs, apparently, because she's hit four home <laughs> runs. Every single one of them haven't even been close. What did you and uh, Kaylin deem that to be out there, Area 51? Area 51. <laughs> Batting average 458, the four home runs, part of 11 hits to this point on the season, has a handful of doubles as well. Eight RBI, OPS north of 1,000 at 
Yeah, you can see Boltwright being very careful with her um, off speed right there, just kind of trying to mix up Edenfield's timing. So she knows in the back of her mind about Area 51 as well, and she, I'm sure she wants to keep that at bay. Big cut there, it goes two and two. I think so far, um, you can kind of see the game plan um, for, for Bolt Wright and Nia Morgan behind the plate. Looks like they're working a lot outside, um, trying not to get into the wheelhouse at the same time. It would be a huge strikeout if she can get it. That ball underneath Nia Morgan, and so that will allow Kaylee Harding to advance into scoring position. Leonard on at third, Harding on at second. It's Edenfield at the plate facing a 3-2. She'll see another one. It's a bit picked right here for Boatwright. Try to pick her teammate up after that air at second base. Three walks, two strikeouts to this point on the season for Michaela, and that is walk number four. The bases are now loaded for Devin Flaherty. Now batting number nine, Devin Flaherty. And so Boatwright has navigated through the significant power at the heart of the order. But now you have Flaherty, who hits for the average, hits to all fields, and led the team in hits a season ago, has a good eye, good speed as well. A player that I think doesn't quite get the love of maybe some of the players who have more power, because a lot of folks, that's what their eye is drawn to, but has been a tremendous talent for the Seminoles from the second she set foot on campus. Yeah, absolutely. I think you definitely hit on. She may not have the home run. I mean, but you, you love a hitter that can hit for average, right? That can take the walks when they're there. And at this point, if she gets a walk, we score a run, right? If she gets a base hit, Florida State, they score a run. So it's not always about those home runs. <laughs> Constance Orr is going to make a trip out to have a chat with Boatwright. And it's a really important conversation because in a pitcher's mind, you were prepared to make your way back to the dugout and that ball was misplayed. Now you've got to walk back in and deal with multiple runners in scoring position, now giving up a walk, and now you've got nowhere to put a talented hitter in flair. Yeah, and especially, I think this is a good timeout right here by Coach Orr, 2-0 count, two outs. Um, really just to pull the team back in, remind them, you know, you have two outs, forget about the air there at second base and really just recenter, refocus, pick your teammate up, go at this hitter, try to have somebody make a good play. That's, that's really all you can ask for in this situation. And Constance Orr knows a thing or two about playing Florida State, a gifted player in her career at North Carolina, playing for the Tar Heels, and now taking over head coaching duties over the last couple of seasons here in Tallahassee with the Rattlers. Just oh, yeah. pulled foul. Oh yeah, <laughs> Constance Orr, we, we were kind of around the same time playing, so we kind of overlapped, and I think she was one that we penciled in when we were scouting to, you know, always watch out for Constance. She's a sneaky, um, you know, hitter. Like, she hits for power, but you just, it's, it's never let Constance Orr beat you. Tremendous head coach at North Carolina, Donna Papa, then was groomed by another true goat of the coaching profession in Veronica Wiggins. Yeah, absolutely, and you see, I mean, I think she has the Rattlers, kind of right where she wants to see them competing um, and playing some good softball, which she actually kind of talked about when we talked to her before the game, and that they're, they're playing good softball, they're competing, and that's what she's wanting to see um, in, the, in these early games. We talked a lot early about Florida State's resume and the wins that they've accumulated. That's five wins against top 25 opponents, not just in general on the season, obviously tournament format in a row coming into this game. This is Florida a ms fourth top 25 game in a row as that ball gets to the backstop. Leonard's going to hold and Harding scampers back to second. 
Well played by the catcher, Nia Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was. I mean, I, I don't think you can ask for a more luckier bounce. It just literally got by her, really bounced back to her, and she, she right away she was heads up, ready to make a play. So good job by Nia Morgan. 3-2, nowhere to put Flaherty. She'll see another one. Batting 520 on the season. Three walks to one strikeout. Puts balls in play. Positive walk to strikeout ratio. Batting over 300 for her career. Big opportunity here. And she'll see yet another one. Yeah, what a good at bat right here by Flaherty. Um, just making boat right throw more pitches, right? Um, seeing more pitches, making her throw more pitches, fouling things off until she gets a pitch that she likes and hopefully she can do something with it. Um, and on the flip side, you see boat right competing. This is a big pitch, three, two, two outs. Um, and knowing that she can get out of this inning with no runs scored, so. Love the matchup. <laughs> when you get to this point with 3 2 count. A quality plate appearance for Devin Flaherty, and she hits Edenfield. That would have gone through the right side and plated runs. Instead, it is out number three, and FAMU leads 2 0 to the second. Great crowd on hand at the Seminole Softball Complex as Florida A&M has a 2-0 lead over the third-ranked Seminoles here in the top of the second, a home run in the top of the first. And how about this break, Tiffany Brown? Yeah, I mean, super unfortunate. Great contact right there by Flaherty. I don't know that Edenfield could have done anything, but once that ball hits you and it's from a batted ball, it's dead ball out, inning over. So, like you said, a big break for the Rattlers and, you know, a bad break for the Seminoles. And so with the 2-0 lead, here's Niasia Armstrong, a freshman from Pensacola, Florida. One hit coming into this matchup with the Seminoles on the season. Prize ball upstairs. I'm Sean Davison along with Tiffany Brown, 2014 Women's College World Series participant here with the Seminoles. And so pleased to be here with you and our entire crew on the ACC Network Extra. 125, the batting average for Armstrong. This is her fourth start on the season. Has started in both left and right field to this point this season. Quickly 3-0 and oh to Armstrong. And this is not something that you want to see um, from Armstrong. You want to see her attack the zone, attack these hitters, especially with the momentum right now being in the Rattlers' dugout. Well, we'll take a look at the series history between Florida State and Florida A&M. It's their 121st meeting all time. The first meeting came back in 1984. They are separated by all of two and a half miles. And the last Florida A&M win here at the Seminole Softball Complex came in 1999. They won it 8-3. to three. And Lonnie Alameda has decided that Emma Wilson's day is done. It'll be Bree Enter, who enters for the Seminoles. One of a couple of players, herself and Emma Wilson, Tiffany, that Coach Alameda told us preseason needs to be intentional about getting in there and getting additional reps this year. Yeah, you know why? Because it's nothing like game reps. I mean, you can throw bullpens all day, but it's nothing like facing another opponent, seeing what you can do, kind of playing that chess match, and um, it's, it's nothing like reps, so they definitely need it to gain that experience and that confidence as well. Junior from Green Cove Springs, Florida. Inherits a two-run deficit with a runner on at first after Wilson 
Got tagged early by Destiny Cuevas. The shortstop for the Rattlers to the deepest part of the park. Straight away center and out of the reach of the outstretched glove of Janai Kerr. Yeah, I mean, she did, it's nothing more that you can ask for. She really took a good pitch over the fence. Um, I would say a missed pitch right there because uh, Emma Wilson was ahead in the count. Just to give her team a lead, get, get your swing off, see what happens. Cuevas took that over center field fence. Well, there's a saying that experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. Emma Wilson got some experience here today. And it'll be a lot to go back to the drawing board, Tiffany, because she was working quickly through the first until the walk to Nyan Morgan and then run. Absolutely. And I think you talk about that experience and something that she'll go back and watch and learn about is how to come back and make those adjustments, right? So on a one-two count, you maybe need to get that up and out of the zone a little bit more, something that is not over the white as much. So just just little things that she can learn about as she continues to get better. Pop up to right, and Harding charges on to record out number one. Asia Armstrong stole second shortly before the pop-up. And Tiffany, that is something that Florida A&M has proven to be particularly adept at this season. One of the nation's better teams in terms of stolen bases. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, as it sits, they're 69th in the nation um, for stolen bases. So that's something that they definitely pride themselves on. I don't think Florida A&M has ever lacked in speed. Um, they usually have some, some players on there that can take some bases. So it's good to see them taking advantage of that. And, and I think that's a testament to Coach Ora and things that she's implementing in her program. And so Coach Ora will take a look at Desiree Beecham, who steps up to square off with three enter. Quickly 0 oh and 2 to Beecham to pitch inside to make it 1 and 2. Fifth appearance of the season for Beecham, third start, just the sixth at bat on the year for Desiree. And she swings through strike three. Limited sample size of work for Brianna entered this season, Tiffany, but that little bit has been impressive and she has really settled in and settled things down here. Yeah, absolutely. Just exactly what you want to see. Enter <laughs> comes into the game and attacks the Rattlers, getting quick two outs, and that's exactly what you want to see. Kind of take that momentum back and bring it back over to her dugout. Mia Blasson gain swings at first pitch. That'll catch the netting. It'll go 0 and 1. Mia, a consistent outfielder for the Rattlers, a junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, has played in multiple different positions in the outfield this season for Florida A&M, today getting the starting nod in center. Batting average at 158, OPS at 316 for Blass and Gain. One of five juniors in the lineup. Slow roller back to enter, and Bree fields her position well to retire the side. 2 nothing, fam you. The Seminoles will try to get those bats fired up when we come back. Two nothing, Florida A&M as we head to the bottom of the second. The Rattlers with the lead here in a crosstown showdown with the Florida State Seminoles. Sydney Sherrill, the senior from Moore, Oklahoma, right outside of Oklahoma City, has made the return trip a couple of times to her hometown area for the Women's College World Series. Would certainly like to make a third one and certainly would be a fixture on the team that does so as she goes opposite field to left. That'll catch the wall, and the double machine for the Seminoles has done it again. I was just actually thinking that when she hit the ball, um, that's, that's what we call a, a Sydney hit. Um, that's what she loves to do, drop those doubles. 
does a great job right there. I love to see her go opposite field. She takes the ball, middle of the plate, and goes oppo taco. Sure did, and that is now the fourth hit for Florida State through the first inning, and now the first hitter of the second. Devin Flaherty, that was a real quality at bat, but because she hit her teammate, that put an end to the first. But saw a lot of pitches, fouled a ton off, got to that 3-2, found one she liked, and drove it what would have been through the right side. So this really continues the momentum Florida State had discovered at the plate, Tim. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, that's exactly what they need to do because we saw just how Boatwright was pretty much what we thought, at least out of the inning, um, and what seemed to be a, a pretty quick outing. So. You want to see Florida State kind of take that momentum from Devin Flaherty's at bat to kind of roll it over to see if they can scratch a couple of runs here to tie the ball game. Well, now they'll turn to Kyle Presti, who got the starting nod as the catcher. For the most part this season, it has been Michaela Edenfield behind the plate. She is the DP today, so that means Lepresti, the veteran, will start behind the plate. And here she is with a 500 batting average to this point this season. Four ABs has recorded a couple of hits. One of those was a double out in St. Petersburg. Also has earned a walk. And I, I can, as this game develops, um, you can pretty much tell at least the game plan for Boatwright as she attacks the Florida State lineup so far. She stayed away from both righties and lefties through the lineup, so I would expect to continue to see that. Off-speed pitch rolls perfectly down the line for Josie Muffley. What a bunch. I think the softball gods were on her side. Next up in the middle, number one. Yeah, you see Muffley Ranger. here. Drop down that drag mud, but it looked like it was going to roll foul right there, and it literally hit the line and kind of rolled back in. So I think she would be safe anyway, either if, if they picked it up or not. So great butt right there by Muffley. Let's turn it back over to the top of the lineup, huh? Bases are loaded once again for Florida State as Hallie Waycaser gets set to step in here. The message was down in the zone by Constance Orr to her pitchers. First pitch Hallie Waycaser saw was elevated and she nearly put one over the center field wall herself like Cuevas did in the top of the first. Now she squares off with Colt right once more and has elevated this one out to right field. This should be deep enough to play to run. Cheryl will come in to score, and it is 2-1 now here at the Seminole Softball Complex. Yeah, absolutely. That's a quality at bat right there by Waycaser. Um, no outs, bases loaded. I mean, your job right there is to have a quality at bat. Obviously, you want to play to run, and she did just that with the sack one. And now that brings up Janai Kerr. on first pitch, Kerr aggressive at the plate. Paying off for a 312 batting average, a home run against Loyola Chicago in the Seminoles season opening tournament. Seven RBI on base percentage at 353. Did record a handful of strikeouts in the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Her. I mean, she's probably still just kind of trying to feel her way through, figure that out, especially after her knee injury um, and coming back this year. So, I mean, just speaking from experience and having a knee injury, you know, it, it takes a lot of, you know, mental um, preparation to kind of get, get back into trusting yourself and get back to the swing of things. So. For sure, the ground ball to second moves the runners into scoring position.
I think Boatwright want to be very careful here with Mac Leonard. Obviously, I, yeah, and I think she knows, you know, I mean, yep. especially Boatwright is, like I mentioned earlier, just that idea, but it's always in the back of your mind when you're, when you're facing a potent lineup, one through nine, one through ten, um, and just understanding you, you want to be careful, but you don't want to be too careful because we don't want to give up walks. But see if you can have them chase some pitches like she did there with Matthew in the first one. With the single in the first, Leonard now, the batting average improving to 552, the on-base percentage north of 600. Yeah, Mac Leonard transferred over and she's like, I'm here. <laughs> and there's an adjustment process to that too. You have to reestablish yourself. It's a new level of competition in a Power Five conference. She hit 425 at Illinois State, came in here, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Nothing really to say. I mean, she's she's been dominating thus far. <laughs> Elevates that ball to center field. Didn't quite catch all of it. Glass and Gain holds on with the tip of the glove, and that is how inning number two comes to a close. Sydney Sherrill got the second inning started for Florida State with an opposite field double. And then Hallie Waycaser lifted one to right field for a sack fly RBI. It is 2-1. The Rattlers over the Knolls heading to the third. Great crowd on hand here at the park, not just inside, but just outside the left field wall here at Joanne Craft Field. Seminoles trying to work their way back into this game with Florida A&M, who with Destiny Cuevas' home run in the top of the first has taken a 2-1 lead here in Tallahassee. And Tiffany, this is part, this playing Florida State, playing Duke, playing Florida is part of Florida A&M's preparation to move from dominating the MEAC into this new chapter of their program's history in the SWAC. Yeah, absolutely. And we, uh, we talked about this with Coach Orr and that transfer over to the SWAC, um, probably a little bit more competitive conference for Florida a and So to have them compete against these teams, to prepare them to compete in their new conference in the SWAC, see if they can continue their dominance like we talked about as they've done in the MEAC. As it stands, coming into the season, they were predicted Preseason number four in the SWAC Eastern Division. Alabama State was the preseason number one for the SWAC Eastern Division. Texas Southern led the way in terms of the preseason polls for the Western Division of the SWAC. Yeah, I think those are going to be some fun games <laughs> to watch there. Um, and watch just how Florida A&M does as they step into that new conference. Bree Enter has really mixed her speeds well to this point, hasn't she? Yeah, she's entered the game, <laughs> and she's done just exactly what you want to see out of a relief pitcher, really attacking the zone, mixing speeds, right, you know, throwing her rise ball, and, and keeping the Rattlers at bay. Working away from Melkayla Irvis. It's the top of the lineup getting things going here for FAMU. In the top of the third, Irvis batting second, grounded out back in the first. Yeah, and if you're a, a Rattler, you're familiar with their lineup, the Janaya Davis, who's missing out of the leadoff spot for the Rattlers, just kind of taking some rest. Um, she, she's pretty much a dominant player, speedy, and really sets the table. So I think the Rattlers there are trying to kind of figure that out um, with, without her in the lineup. but. Well wishes to her, hopefully everything's okay and we can get her back in the lineup. Another valuable bat that they like to have in the lineup, a two-way player for them, Chris Deanna Beasley, who has really done a nice job for them in the circle as well. Not available for the Rattlers here this afternoon, this evening, I should say. And so that's another player that they would certainly have wanted to see in one or both capacities tonight yeah. that just isn't part of the picture. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, it's nice to have some depth there because Boatwright stepped up, stepped in the circle, um, and has really done a good job thus far in kind of keeping the Seminoles 
at bay and, and keeping her team in this game. Fourth walk of the season for Melkayla Urbis did not bite on the 3-2 changeup. I don't know, that's a pretty good pitch right there. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to see a 3-2 changeup and not a bad miss right there by Bree Inter. She just needs to continue to keep doing what she's been doing, which is attacking the zone, attacking the hitters, um, especially as she moves through the meat of the Rattlers lineup. And that'll bring up Naya Morgan. Morgan, the best batting average on the club, walked in the first. And that is what started the trouble for Emma Wilson. On base percentage of 407 now for Morgan. Ground ball here to Flaherty. And Devin is able to record the double play. A little indecision, but the Seminoles make their way off the field. The 4-3 DP gets it back to the Seminoles. That's Tiffany. Yeah, she does a great job right there. Actually, the runner was still on the pitch, maybe a hit and run, but she stays down, takes that bag, fires over to first for a double play. Maybe she can take that momentum on and see if the Knowles can score some runs. All right, from the band, it's time for the Lord Game Battle. Florida, as we head into the bottom of the third inning, it's Florida A&M with the 2-1 lead over the third-ranked Seminoles here at Joanne Graff Field. Kaylee Harding will lead things off for Florida State this inning. The Knowles will go 4-5-6 to start as we get back underway at the Seminole Softball Complex. Brandis Boatwright got the start for the Rattlers. Has flirted with trouble in both of the first two innings. Bases have been loaded in both innings and she and her defense have done well to limit the damage and maintain this lead to this point. But now she squares off with a player that was the hero for Florida State in their last game of the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Five top 25 wins over Tennessee, Texas, Michigan, UCF, and UCLA. The pitchers went 34 innings, 22 hits, nine runs, four walks, 31 strikeouts. And Harding has drilled this ball to right center field, out to the wall, and what a play by Blassen Kane. She, I mean, right now, she is literally like a vacuum cleaner. Like, <laughs> I love it. I mean, you see Kaylee Harden does a great job. She hits this ball well, out to the Next fence. Blast the game, goes Kayla back to the wall, tracks that. And look at Boatwright. She is hype. Fire me up, Boatwright says. Add a girl out there in center field. What a great catch. All right, then. Here's Edenfield, swinging on first pitch. <laughs> you see Blazin game, I'm not sure what that is. That looks like some drum major moves right there, but I mean, she's hype, I love it. Hey, when you're responsible for a couple of web gems, you can do whatever you want out there. Absolutely, I don't, I don't think anybody's complaining. I mean, she's made two outstanding catches um, for her team. And honestly, if, if Florida AM wants to win this game. That's exactly what they're going to need to do um, on all sides of the ball, right? So defense and offense. So, so far, looking good for the Rattlers. Janaya Mobley records the pop up. Now batting, and that's out nine, number two. Devin so you get through Harding, who put a charge into one. It's a very loud out to deep center field. Then you go off speed and Edenfield pops it up into the glove of your first baseman, Mobley. And all of a sudden, Boatwright, who struggled through the first couple of innings a little bit, has really seemingly settled in here. She squares off with Devin Flaherty, who did not catch all of it. A mile high in the air and Cuevas charges in to secure it. A one, two, three inning for Boatwright. Wow, the Rattlers up, two, one to the fourth. Back to Tallahassee as we head to the top of the fourth, Florida A&M up 2-1 over Florida State. And the Seminoles head coach, Lonnie Alameda, joins us now. Coach, 
Emma Wilson got the start. Bree Enter came in in relief. How do you like what you've seen out of Bree and her efforts to settle things in in the circle? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we obviously know that uh, Kat and Danielle can get after some time in the circle, but, you know, to develop some other pitchers and get some pressure situations, it's good for both of them. So um, change-up's looking good. Roswell's looking good. So, you know, she's doing good things. Yeah, and Coach, on the flip side, um, for, for the hitting, I think we've seen some solid contact um, for the nose. What do you want to see as you continue as they continue to move through the game to try to scratch a run or even take the leap? Yeah, no, definitely. Like, I'm making adjustments is the biggest thing, right? So, um, you know, maybe pressing a little bit, you know, it's a big weekend. You come here, this is a great atmosphere, you know, but maybe pressing a little bit, but, you know, making adjustments and get after and having quality at bats. All right, Coach, we'll let you get back to it. Best Thank of you. luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Coach. All right, so plenty of work to do for Florida A&M and the Florida State Seminoles here in Tallahassee. And we re-enter back in the circle. So as a result of the double play, we start off this inning with Destiny Cuevas. The home run hero from the first inning for Florida A&M leads things off. It'll be the first time Bree Enter has seen her. And the off-speed pitch kind of ends up in no man's land. Enter tried to make the flip and could not quite get it to Leonard. Now the ball gets away and it does so once more. Good coverage though in left field by Waycaser charging up with the ball to hold Cuevas at second. Yeah, as you see here, Cuevas, I mean, hits this off the end of the bat. Maybe a little spin right there from Inter. She couldn't really handle it. And just a misplay, and Cuevas takes advantage of that and hustles on down to second. Luckily, Way Kaser was in position um, to back up, or else that could have just turned into a bad play right there for, for the Seminoles. So Cuevas, the shortstop, is in scoring position. And look at the Rattlers' dugout over there. They're loving it. Yeah, as they should be. I mean, I am really enjoying, I mean, everybody is on the fence. They are really into this game, really just there for their teammates and, and enjoying this atmosphere. So I think right now all the momentum is over in the Rattlers dugout and the Florida State Seminoles, they want to take the, the win here. They might need to pick it up just a little bit. Certainly. As you see Coach Alameda looking on, giving some signals to her pitcher, Brianna Enter. Pitcher on pitcher. Boatwright, one of a couple of two-way players for Florida A&M. She grounded out in her first plate appearance of the evening. Batting average now at 2.11 on base percentage at 3.18. Pushes that ball down the line. Cheryl puts her away at first. That will advance Cuevas to third and an opportunity for Florida A&M to add to their lead with a sacrifice. Yeah, absolutely. That's a quality at bat right there by Boatwright. Really understanding the, the power of team, right? That that we over me mentality and, and laying down the sacrifice to move Cuevas over to third with one out. And so it will be the freshman Miasia Armstrong. The Rattlers have played plenty of big games to this point. This one of four straight, as I mentioned earlier, top 25 games in a row for them. But you can't imagine an at-bat or a moment to this point of her young career any bigger than this one right here right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, facing the number three team in the nation and Bree Enter having the lead right now with your teammate down at third base and looking to tack on one additional run. Did walk earlier. Swings through the off speed to make it one and two. Yeah, and if you're Armstrong right here with a one two count, I mean, your job right now, you don't want to swing too big, but really just kind of short and sweet to the ball. See if you can make some solid contact. And that qualifies. The Rattlers will score a third run, and the freshman delivers in a huge moment for FAMU. Yeah, huge is right, Sean. She definitely did. I mean, I, I kind of just was alluding to kind of shorten up, and she did there. Really just took a pitch outside and, and yanked it down 
the third base line that really just fell right inside of the third base line, scoring her teammate Cuevas. So another quality at bat right there for the Rattlers. 3-1, Florida A&M in the top of the fourth. First pitch strike from Brianna Enter. This is Anija Vargas. Off the end of the bat, Cheryl charges on, cannot make the play. Throw goes to second, they'll get the force there. Just what she drew up there. <laughs> That's it, I mean. That was a pretty, she was playing pretty far back there. Kind of jammed her off the inside of the bat. And I think she just kind of took her off, eye off of it a little bit, but it worked out. Just go ahead and get the force out of second. So here is Desiree Beecham. Batting 167 on the season, struck out in the second. Popped up to Flaherty, and out three is recorded. But three runs have also been recorded by the visiting Florida A&M Rattlers. The Seminoles 7, 8, 9 do up when we come back. Welcome back here to Tallahassee, Florida on the ACC Network Extra. Florida A&M visiting their crosstown rivals, Florida State. They have a 3-1 lead. Their head coach, Constance Orr, joins us now. And coach, you told us before the game that the theme and the message today was to compete. How do you characterize what you've seen out of your team to this point? Oh, I can't ask for anything more. Um, they're competing, they're doing everything they can. And we're just playing this game and having some fun. Yeah, and Coach Orr just kind of um, continue on with that that theme of competing but what are you telling your team right now with the lead going into the bottom of the fourth to maybe try to finish this game on out just play with the lead um, the pressure is on Florida State right now don't play with any pressure on you and just have some fun as long as we're having fun we play our best all right well we'll let you get back to it we wish you all the best here the rest of the way thank you all right thank you and so from the current head coaches of Florida State and Florida A&M here are the legendary longtime coaches of these programs Dr. Joanne Graff and Veronica Wiggins. There's oh. a lot of history and a lot of winning in those two seats, T. Brown. Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. Look at them sitting together. I just love it. My softball heart just literally jumped out of my chest seeing Coach Graff and Coach Wiggins uh, sitting together. Both of them have done so much for the game of softball. I, I, I can only imagine um, what they feel seeing this atmosphere tonight and seeing the growth of game, especially as much as the impact that they've had on the softball game a literal ton of wins Literally. between the two of them. A bunch of conference titles as well because Florida A&M has dominated the MEAC for years under Coach Wiggins before her retirement. And then of course, a lot of folks around here know what Coach Graff has done in the AIAW era, shepherding this program from slow pitch to fast pitch, from the AIAW to the NCAA era, still making repeat Women's College World Series trips at that point. I mean, both of these ladies are true pioneers of softball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can't talk about softball and, and the culture and, and the, you know, the success of Florida A&M and Florida State without talking about Joanne Graff, Dr. Joanne Graff and Veronica Wiggins. I mean, you just cannot talk about those programs without those two leading the way. How much do you want to bet that these two are still kind of coaching under their breath? <laughs> Just a little bit, I'm just sure. Just a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure. And and also, I mean, just give a nod to um, both of them. Have they supported the, the transition, you know, from being head coach to now being fans and supporting um, their schools and just, I mean, look at what Coach Orr is doing over at Florida, Florida A&M and, and what Coach Alameda has done here at Florida State and taking over the reign. So, I mean, thank you to both of them for <laughs> <laughs> just the growth of the game and everything they've done to soft for softball. For sure. Could not agree more as Sydney Sherrill would like to spark a rally here for her Seminoles. Again, 7-8-9 to start here in the bottom of the fourth. She earns the leadoff walk and sets the stage now for Kaya Lopresti. 
Yeah, and if you're Florida State, I mean, just down by two, you want base runners, right? You want base runners, um, you know, put a little pressure on the defense um, and, and see if you can get a couple of runners in scoring position and, and give your chance, give your team the, the chance to score some runs. Popped up into foul territory and out of the reach of three different Rattlers. The Presti will live to see another one. And Tiffany, Kyle Lepresti is a player that I think a lot of folks, especially now post the St. Pete tournament, are talking a lot about Michaela Edenfield and, and how talented she is. Lepresti stepped into a very difficult situation following the Anna Shelnut injury and really asserted herself well as then a true freshman on this club. And if you ask a lot of folks, she is a player that really does have the pulse of her teammates and gets along with all of them. She is somebody that everybody in that dugout loves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about a one-two punch on the pitching side, but I think you have a one-two punch right here on the catcher, on the catching side for the, the Seminoles. I mean, um, Edenfield, she comes in, she does great, but so does Lepresti. And I think at any point you can put either one of them behind a plate and still get that that same quality catching experience. Ball in the dirt. Cheryl advances another 60. Good eye by the senior leader. Yeah. That was a good beat right there by Sid Sheriff. She saw that ball in the dirt. Great jump. And I mean, I think just little things like that is what you need if you're a Florida State Seminole to kind of swing that momentum back on your side and get back into this ball game. Cuevas, nice job at short. Holds the lead runner, Sid Sherrill, and fires a bullet over to first to retire right. Kyle Lepresti. Number 10, Josie Buckley. I mean, I'm just looking at Blazing. Um, Blazing Gain out there in center field, and she's been doing jumps, I mean, I think maybe the whole game, but I don't know how they do it. I mean, she's been doing the same karate kicks after every out almost. And we asked before we came up on the air, hat tip to our producer Wyatt Dossie, who asked, so then I asked <laughs> Coach Orr, does she do karate? And she laughed, and she said she does a little bit of everything. <laughs> I mean, definitely. Karate, karate kicks. You know, Robin doubles, balls off the wall. She, she just does it all. There you see her looking on. Ready for perhaps another web gem, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, apparently she stays ready, so. Ball one above the zone to Josie Muffley. Recorded a beautiful bunt single. Batting average now up to 714. Quickly 2-0 to Muffley, and I think, Tiffany, there's a lot to be said for competition and young players coming in and pushing the older players. Brooke Blankenship was a Cantonist prospect out of high school, came in here with a very hot bat, and just by nature of having a really hot bat and being solid at short, Josie Muffley ended up coming in off the bench for a few games. What did she do when she got her opportunity to come back in? Went two for two against UCF and is now one for one here against Florida A&M. Yeah, it's, it's nothing like um, having someone push you and vice versa. I mean, I, it's, it's nothing like competition. You want that within a team and that just creates and breeds winning culture. And so when Brooke Blankenship gets her opportunity, she takes advantage and same thing for Josie Muffley and, and that goes down the line um, for, for whichever team you're even talking about. Muffley at the bottom of the order. If she gets aboard, it turns over with multiple runners on the base paths. And I even think just thinking about um, that winning culture, and that's something that Coach Alameda has done for the Seminoles and talked about competition, right? And you see Muffley does a great job taking that ball down the right field line and lighting a fire under her team because they needed that hit right there. And she comes in off the bench and, and just step right back in as if she's been playing. Cuts the lead to one and I'll correct myself. Two for two against UCF and now two for two to this point against Van Yu. Yeah, she does a great job right there. Just taking that pitch on the outside corner there, driving that ball down the right field line. 
And so with that, a pitching change is in store here in Tallahassee. We'll set the scene and introduce you to the new Rattler when we come back on the ACC Network Extra. Well, folks, we mentioned earlier that we were not expecting to see Chris Deanna Beasley, the junior from Live Oak, Florida tonight. That was express directive and verbiage from Coach Orr herself. But hey, when you have a one run lead heading into the bottom of the fourth with one aboard and one out recorded, well, you know, you make some decisions and you take some chances. And here's Chris Deanna Beasley in the circle. Yeah, you forgot one thing against the number three team in the nation. That's true. <laughs> You definitely take some chances, right? Throw your best pitcher out there, see if they can take that win. And we talked about um, Boat Wright's um, utility, and you see her move from pitcher to first base, so love to see it. Okay. Off speed, strike one. And this also, Tiffany, the third trip through the order. So Florida State now will hit, would have seen vote right twice, would have been able to make all kinds of adjustments. I think we've seen Florida State adjust pretty well to her with the six hits through the first couple of innings, uh, first three innings, I should say, to this point. Okay. Um, so I think on a multitude of different levels, it's a it's a move that makes sense for Florida A&M. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just to give um, the Seminoles a new look, maybe mix up their timing a little bit and see if Beasley can hold down the lineup and, and keep her team with the lead. Muffley on the way to second, throw well off the bat, and she is in safely. There's the eagle swoop, which is their thing for stolen bases. You've got the typical bow and arrow for doubles. Yeah, good jump right there by Muffley. That was a straight steal. She was going all the way. Swag at second, get your teammates hyped up. Tie and run down there at second base. With all that added speed too, Muffley would be able to score easily from second. Worth keeping an eye on as Wake Case receives a 3-1. Again, off speed, this time for ball four. Yeah, how about that, right? The 3-1 changeup. A little close. Uh, it could have probably went both ways, but home plate umpire said that was a ball. And I think, you know, if you're Beasley, you just come in, you, you definitely don't want to sway that momentum back to Florida State. Maybe try to coil that down, but you want to see her just attack these hitters a little bit better. Ball down in the dirt. Throw goes down to third. And Muffley slides in behind the would-be tag. Both runners advance, of course, with the throw down two-third. Waycaser advances 60 into scoring position as well. These are the little things right here. Um, Florida State is really big on base running. You see them being very aggressive there. I think that ball actually beat Muffley to third base, but she was able to slide in, and that's, that's what you love about being um, super aggressive there and seeing if you can steal bases, take some bases, and, and really give your team the opportunity to take the lead here. Tying run on at third, go ahead run on at second. Janai Kerr at the plate. The first it goes, Boatwright comes home with it, and they get Muffley out. The Seminoles continue to knock on the door, but at the end of every inning, Tiffany, the Rattlers find a way to steal the momentum back. Yeah, what a great play down there at first by Boatwright. She understands and knows exactly what she needs to do. Steps on first, throws it to four to get Muffley out at home. Top five in Tallahassee, the hometown of both of these schools and Florida A&M. Tiffany, they are feeling themselves as they should following a double play to end the fourth. Yeah, again, we talked about this at the end of the last inning. Boatwright knows exactly what she needs to do there. She gets that ground ball right by first base, steps on first and fires it to home. 
and to get Muffley out and arguably, arguably, we could argue that that was obstruction, but it looked like um, Nia Morgan there was able to kind of wait until the ball got there and, and put the tag on Muffley. So tough break for the Seminoles, but that's a great job defensively for the Rattlers. And again, I mean, they are playing for the most part some solid softball right now. And that, I think that's exactly what's keeping them in the game. Last inning, you, you could have seen that, that inning unraveling for the Rattlers, but they settled down, got a nice little double play right there. And Blassen Kane goes right back up the middle and through a leadoff base hit for the center fielder. That's worth another karate kick or two. I wasn't sure if we were going to get that at first base, but <laughs> Blassen Kane, I mean, she's really been firing her team up. And I actually thought about last inning we were talking about her. That, that, isn't, that isn't even her normal position at center field. No. Janai Davis is the one that would kind of be holding down center field. So she's really stepped in for her teammates. You see her get a base hit right there. And again, I mean, the Rattlers have all the momentum on their side right now. They, to me, have been winning the competitive edge of who has more energy the Rattlers have. They certainly have it, and the Seminoles have Katherine Sandercock making her way into the circle. We'll be back to the Seminole Softball Complex in a moment. Florida as we take a look at our game summary between the Rattlers and the Seminoles. It was the shortstop Destiny Cuevas to the deepest part of the park. Given the Rattlers the early 2-0 lead, Hallie Waycaser recorded the sack fly to cut into the lead. Then some good hitting by the freshman DP Niasia Armstrong made it 3-1. The Seminoles would respond with another run of their own to make it 3-2 but an inning ending double play in the fourth allowed the Rattlers to save some momentum and now they've struck at the bottom of the order with Nia Blassengain up the middle, a no out base runner and so Florida State has brought in their third pitcher in now five innings against FAMU. Katherine Sandercock now squares off at the top of the order with Kiana Watson, a player who typically Tiffany bats at the bottom of the order, but because of some of the shifts and some of the adjustments that Coach Orr is continuing to make, trying to find the right dynamic, trying to right, find the right combination, it's Watson moving from the bottom to the top of the order. Yeah, and you can argue, I mean, being number nine to me is really just being a second leadoff, right? So, I mean, you usually put someone down at number nine who's maybe has a little bit more speed, can kind of get that inning going to turn the lineup over. So, in all honesty, she's really just stepped up from number nine, the, the, the second leadoff to, you know, being the leadoff and, and seeing what she can do for her team here. Popped up the bun, it gets out of the reach of Kaya Lopresti. And I mentioned Katherine Sandercock checking in to ideally for the Seminoles close this one out. The senior from McLean, Virginia, all she did in St. Petersburg is pitched so well that she was named the NFCA National Pitcher of the Week. Yeah, she also was garnered ACC Pitcher of the Week, rightfully so. <laughs> she's National Pitcher of the Week. I mean, in Katherine Sandercock, she's very consistent. Down in the zone is what you're going to see. And, and really, she's actually started to mix in a little rise ball to kind of get those eye levels changing. But you know what you're going to get with Catherine Sandicott. Ground balls, ground balls, ground balls. Count one and two. Just one hit on the season for Watson, whose batting average is sub 100. Would be a big hit here to keep the momentum going. She comes up empty, and Sandra Cox starts her outing this evening with a strikeout. Yeah, and there it is right there. Catherine Sandra Cox just doing what she does best, throw that drop ball. And she's really been very good at throwing that in, which is a very hard pitch for um, lefty, and definitely lefty slappers to really make contact with. She does a great job painting the inside corner with that drop ball. So good pitch and, and good first um, start for Catherine Santa Cox. She comes in as relief. Well, Kayla Irvis steps in. Irvis recorded a walk in the third. Grounded out to first, unassisted in the first. Oh, 
Crowd's not too happy with home plate there. Feel like maybe he's squeezing a little bit. I think so far he's been pretty consistent with his zone. And Tiffany, as we watch this, I'm struck by just the depth and the level of parity that there is in college softball, the level that we've seen from teams that have come into Tallahassee, teams that played in Tampa St. Pete, teams that have gone and played in other tournaments elsewhere. This is a team in Florida A&M who has played a pretty rugged schedule to this point. They've got a one and eight record to show for it, yet as you look at the scoreboard, they're up 3-2 over a team that frankly was getting legitimate conversation and consideration as maybe being the top team in the country. Yeah, absolutely. And, all, and what you see from the Rattlers, I mean, we talked about, I know their record doesn't show for it, but they, for the most part, have been in those ball games. It's literally been one or two innings um, that, that kind of go awry for them, but they've been playing some solid softball. But you see here maybe a little base running blunder, maybe trying to be a little bit too aggressive right there from Blazingain and Kyla Presti throwing her out. And a big 2-2 coming to Mel Kayla Irvis. Ground ball to Flaherty. And she has been automatic at second for the Seminoles throughout the expanse of her college career. Perhaps the momentum shifting back to the Seminoles. They're three, four, five, two up. I mentioned the quality of softball and how the profile is rising. This crowd on a Wednesday night is becoming the norm, not just here in Tallahassee, but in a lot of places. And what an honor it is to be here to take it all in. Sean Davison, 2014 Women's College World Series participant, Tiffany Brown, our entire ACC Network Extra crew on hand with you in Florida's capital city where the Florida A&M Rattlers out of the SWAC have a 3-2 lead over the third ranked team in the country heading into the bottom of the fifth, but the Seminoles will try to strike in the heart of their order going 3-4-5. It starts with Mack Leonard and she's jacked this ball to center. Didn't quite catch all of it and oh my goodness, Glass and Gain again. Yeah, she does a great job out there. That one not as exciting as her catches against the wall. But, I mean, like I said, she's been in a new position. She's playing center field, kind of stepping in for Davis there. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Maybe she lost it in the lights there. But all you can do is just do what you can do. And she hangs on there with a little snowball effect for the first out of the inning. And I think that's a big out for um, getting Mac Leonard out. Leonard Mack, sorry. <laughs> So sorry, I'm just definitely mixing up her name. But that's it's all right. There. <laughs> it happens. Kaylee Harding, 0 for 2, did reach on an error. <laughs> Laid off the off speed, it goes 2 0. Her heroics against UCLA came off Holly Acevedo who is really seemingly stepping forward as a dynamite pitcher for Kelly Inouye, Kelly Inouye Perez's Bruins. First year, the Bruins are without Rachel Garcia, so Acevedo stepping up into the spotlight for them and really did a nice job in St. Pete, mixed her speeds well, really wreaked havoc on Auburn, but it was Harding who made the adjustment, waited on the change and drove it out to left. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and she really did a good job against the Seminoles when she came in. Um, late in the game to kind of keep them at bay. So I would imagine she might step into that number two role and, and settle into that. For sure. Harding trying to step into the role of hero once again for the second game in a row. She sees a 3-1. And will learn a walk. Tying run is aboard. And that'll bring up Michaela Edenfield. Yeah, and again, if you're, you're the Florida State Seminoles right now, down by one, you want base runners, which is something that they had um, the last inning. You want quality at bats, right? So we don't want the easy, lazy fly balls. You want to see them have quality at bats, make some solid contact, put some pressure on the defense, get some runners in scoring position, and take advantage of that opportunity. And if you're Florida State, it's hard to imagine another player you'd want at the plate more than this one right here. Michaela Edenfield.
squares off now with Beasley. Earned a walk and fouled out in her prior plate appearances. Batting average at 440 on base percentage north of 500. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if she hits one out to Area 51 right now, this place will absolutely erupt. Beasley continuing to go off speed. We're seeing her really stick to that changeup more as her primary pitch as opposed to when Boatwright would mix in the changeup sporadically. Yeah, and, and again, I mean, that's just a testament to the power. She knows Florida State has that power, but she's doing a great job mixing speeds, throwing that changeup. And what's really important for Beasley and making her a little bit more potent is that she's throwing that changeup for a strike. And she threw it for strike three to retire Edenfield. And so, and so here's Devin Flaherty. Five nineteen recorded a single earlier tonight. Off speed is low. It goes two and zero oh yeah, to the second again, baseman. That changeup. And again, like I mentioned, she's throwing it for a strike, which which actually makes it harder for the Florida State Seminoles because you have to either pick one, right? You're either going to sit on that change or wait for something hard and react to that changeup. It's 3-0 and oh now to Flaherty. The inning started with Mack Leonard flying out to center. Harding walked. Edenfield struck out. A 3-0 to the second baseman, Flaherty, now make it 3-1. I'm pretty sure Beasley has thrown like four change-ups in a row. Uh, I would agree with that. <laughs> Fifth one is ball four. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you see Beasley, she's really mixing in this changeup, and I'm not sure exactly where that missed. Um, home play umpire maybe thought that would, that one came in a little high, um, but I mean, th I think the, the the thing is that Beasley is is attacking that zone with that changeup. And so here's Sydney Sherrill, a player who. It seems like yesterday set foot in Tallahassee at the time was the second baseman with Jesse Warren on at third, has moved over to the hot corner and done so well over there that Coach Alameda called it Area 24, and that's how Area 51 kind of caught on for Edenfield. But Sydney Sherrill is a player that, for all her talent, for all the fireworks, for all the awards and accolades, isn't that type of person that's super vocal, Tiffany. And so becoming more of the leader vocally has been the challenge for her as she is now one of the senior leaders of this squad. She's one of those players that leads by example. This is a great time to put that into practice. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for Sid Cheryl, I mean, it's nothing like a player that can lead you know, by example. And you see Coach Orr going out, taking a timeout, maybe trying to calm Beasley down, just remind her where she is in this game with a 3-2 lead. She has two outs, you know, no need to be too careful, maybe attack the zone. Be smart, of course, um, attack the zone and just kind of let her defense play, right? See what your defense, they've been doing a great job. Don't try to do it all by yourself. And so post-conversation, Beasley resets. And the count again, 2-1 to Sydney Sherrill. Yeah, and back to Sydney Sherrill, just being a, a leader there, having to step into that role as a more vocal leader. Doesn't get the job done there. Family leading 3-2.
Florida A&M has brought a good contingent of fans to the Seminole Softball Complex with their Let's Go Rattlers sign. They've got plenty of reason to be fired up. And Tiffany, if they come away with the win, they will certainly be partying like it's 1999 because that's how long it's been since they've won a game here at Florida State's home turf. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, I think obviously that would be a, a big win for the Rattlers to kind of cue them in and get them ready for their new competition with the SWAC. But I think if you're Coach Orr and you're the family Rattler, you cannot be more proud than the way that this team has showed up today. I mean, they've been doubt. making the plays behind Boatwright. They've stepped up with big defensive plays. They've stepped up with quality at bats. They've played team ball. And really, I mean, the energy has been great for them. So, I mean, you just, like she talked about competing, I mean, you can't be more proud than what they've put on thus far. And so this is where the rubber really meets the road as we speed toward the conclusion. And Nia Morgan rips one right back up the middle. Muffley laid out to stop it. It squirted out from underneath her torso. And there is a leadoff base runner for Florida A&M. Yeah, none other than Nia Morgan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's been very consistent. I mean, she does a great job here. Looks like that drop ball inside. She does great getting her hands through the ball, and it just sneaks up under Muffley's glove, but that's a great effort by Muffley. And if you're a pitcher, that's something that you want to see behind you defensively, your team laying out and trying to make those plays for you. Alexis Jones, a freshman, will come in to pinch run. At first, for Naya Morgan. You see Coach Orr over there putting a little bit more speed on the base path, see if she can cause some chaos, create some havoc, maybe scratch her in here as they get a little bit later into this ball game. Cuevas squares to bunt and pops it foul. 0-1 to the shortstop who is two for two. Sharp liner toward Florida State's dugout. Quickly 0-2 to Cuevas. The two-run home run now ties her with Naya Morgan with seven RBI on the season, each co-leading the team. And then the single in the fourth as well. Yeah, Cuevas definitely has been having a day. Took on the ball out wide. It goes one and two. Another one coming from Catherine Sandercock. Lepresti up and out of her stance quickly to keeping the freshman Jones honest at first. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here's a great job right here. A good one-two pitch. You see working off the plate, getting Cuevas to chase her junk. And Lepresti being very wise but smart and making sure that Jones stays near first. Boat right with the foul tip. Makes it 0-1. A pair of ground outs to third for Brandis Boatwright, who started in the circle. And after being subbed for Christiana Beasley, moved over to first. So she remains in the lineup. Batting average now at 200. about the energy over there. Yeah, I love it. I, I mean, I think the Rattlers, they just, I mean, they always bring the chance, they bring that energy, but I think it's just on another level today, which is great, um, on a good level, right? I mean, they, they're in this game, they're competing. I, I think they feel very confident right now, um, and they're having a lot of fun. 
and it's nothing like playing softball loops, <laughs> you know. Coach Orr's having some fun too. That smile's <laughs> good to see. <laughs> two and two. Sandra Cock, not a pitcher that records an overwhelming number of strikeouts, more of the pitch to contact type, but she has three in an inning and two thirds of work. I was gonna place a bet with you there to see if what she was gonna throw, but my guess was gonna be a drop ball inside, and I think that's exactly what she threw. Just, she's very good at, at, at painting that corner there to the lefties, and she feels comfortable throwing. I mean, she goes to that consistently, and that is a tough pitch to hit. A drop ball on the inside corner, especially especially as a lift. And so here is Miasia Armstrong. Pushed across the deciding run. What to this point is the deciding run for Florida A&M? And that was a big at bat right there by Miasia Armstrong. As a freshman, you know, in a, in a big situation there with her teammate at third and against the number three team in the nation. She does, and like it was nothing, she, <laughs> she took that pitch down the left field line, gave her team that additional run, which right now seems to be the decider. Just her second hit on the season. She goes opposite field this time. Harding backs up and corrals it. Florida State is down to their final six outs. We'll see what they do in the bottom of the sixth when we return. Welcome back to Tallahassee, Florida on the ACC Network Extra. Haley Mudge now checking in for Florida State in place of where Kyle Lopresti got the nod in the starting lineup. Mudge, the left fielder for Florida State this season, hails from Winter Springs, Florida. Had a trove of hits out in Oklahoma City. Set a Women's College World Series record you talk about somebody getting hot at the right time. I mean, she got hot, and I and I actually recognized it. I think it started ACC once they moved her up to the top of the lineup. I mean, she was hit. She she wasn't getting hits at that moment, but I mean, she was making solid contact. And as we always say, I mean, keep making that solid contact; it'll start to fall. Batting average as it stands this season at 364. So she has continued that into the new year. In fact, her first go around, recorded a home run. Yeah, there you see another change up again by Beasley. I mean, she's gonna continue to throw it. There's another off-speed offering called strike two. And that smile has turned into a steely glare from Coach Orr, locked in on her pitcher. Maybe a little wry smile. <laughs> you see her calling pitches there. I mean, she's very in tune. She too was a pitcher at UNC, and she's doing pretty well thus far with her pitchers. Coach Lonnie Alameda calls usable ground outs, right? A whole lot of pitches that a player might see. Obviously, home runs, doubles, singles, whatever. She calls them all quality plate appearances. And that is a quality plate appearance from Kaylee Mudge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And just what you want to see with Mudge coming off the bench, getting a pitch hit. And in her role today was to step in and be a pinch hitter. And she does just that by getting the opportunity to get a four pitch walk and maybe fire up her team, see again what they can do on the base pass, remain aggressive, and see if they can tie up this ballgame. Best bat in the lineup here tonight is this one. Josie Muffley, two for two. 
Yeah, we talked about taking advantage of your opportunities, and Muffley has done that tonight. Two for two. She's had some quality at bats. Nice bunt single and driving in a run with a line drive down the right field line. So she's been consistent today. I think that's what you can ask for. Took on the ball up high. And Tiffany, I'd submit this to you. Like, I think a lot of folks were taken aback last year by the relative absence of power that they were accustomed to seeing in years prior for Florida State. And I think one of the things that a lot of people are taking notice of is that the power is back. For me, the real headliner is how good their approach at the plate has been, letting balls travel deep, working to the opposite field, and just really nickel and diming teams with the added power on top. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about the, the power that was lacking, you know, last year and, and them still finding a way to win ball games. And this year you bring that power back. At least it, it seems like it's back so far. Um, and that's that's exactly right. Learning how to be learning how to be. Well, that's exciting. <laughs> Sorry. You're good. <laughs> but learning how to be consistent and have those quality at bats and you dissect that, that base running right there. That was amazing base running. Okay, I'll, I'll dissect it for you. Florida State, in the absence of power, had a whole lot of speed. Speed creates chaos, and they still have that speed, and chaos is what happened here, T. Brown. Yeah, absolutely. I much did not even stop as she was rounding second. That was great base running. You see her peek in right there to see what's going on, and she kept going, adding that pressure, sliding in safe, and then Muffley doing what she's supposed to do trailing and getting to second and now you have second and third big inning um, with the heart of your lineup I'm sorry the top of your lineup turning that that lineup over with your big backs coming up second and third with no outs it's a pretty darn good bunt by Muffley as well and it will be ruled a single so she's now three for three and then of course the chaos on top of that she turned the single into a double yeah, absolutely. And you see Coach Orr um, rap, pulling in her team, the whole team, including the outfield, maybe trying to settle them down, remind them they've been playing some great defense. They've been here in this situation before in this game and was able to work into, you know, a ground out double play. So just reminding her team, settling them down, bringing them back in, focusing on one pitch at a time. Go at these batters, see what you can do defensively. A wealth of opportunities here for Florida State as the order turns over. Hallie Waycaser has an RBI sack fly from earlier in this game. If she repeats those efforts, the game will be tied. The sack fly came back in the second when she flied out to right. Put a charge into a ball to the deepest part of the park in the first. It was tracked down at the wall. Yeah, another one, Coach Alameda highlighted as someone getting some at bats and stepping in and seeing what she can do as a freshman. In addition, she walked in the fourth. She's got a 2 0 count here. Make it 2 1. Consistently throwing that change up there. And she's going to challenge these Florida State hitters to get on time with that change up. Down in the dirt. And it's 3 1 for the youngster Way Caser. You mentioned, Tiffany, the injury for Janai Kerr last season. Way Caser, before the season started, had a knee injury. And she got a hold of one and pulled it foul. Troy Cameron could not hang on. He might hear something about that when he makes his way back to the dugout no, eventually. Butterfingers down there. Uh -huh. What's going on? Hey, coach. <laughs> I think he's already hearing something about it. <laughs> Three, two. Pulled foul once again. I 
think for these Florida State Seminoles, as they continue to face Beasley for the last few innings here, um, they, they, they have to recognize that she's throwing that change up and she's throwing it for a strike. So you sit change and react fast, right? I don't think Beasley's going to blow it by them. Um, right now that change up is what's giving them trouble. So sit on that pitch, keep those hands back, and drive it. Ground ball to short. Cuevas comes home with it, and Mudge is safe. Good to see Kaylee Mudge getting up. It was nerve wracking, but ground ball down the shortstop. She throws that. I don't. I don't see anything there. Uh, Morgan looked like she gave much opportunity to get to home plate. Maybe just a weird slide into her cleat there as she comes in. Kind of freak play. I, I definitely thought much was hurt, so hopefully she's okay. But nonetheless, tie ball game. Went from a cheer to you could hear a pin drop to a cheer again, and we got runners on the corners here in the bottom of the sixth. Autumn Belvi checks in as the pinch runner for Waycaser at first. I would look for her to try to steal and get to second. Maybe put a little pressure here on the Rattlers defense, see if they can scratch another run. The last time Florida State really snipped momentum, Janai Kerr stepped up to the plate. Ripped a ground ball down the first base line. Boatwright was able to corral it, step on the bag, fire it back home for a double play, and that's how the inning ended back in the fourth. Kerr now steps back up, runners in scoring position. Belvi has stolen second. And this will bounce through the right side. The Seminoles have taken their first lead. A bobble out in the outfield. And Belvi comes in, she's underneath the tag, and the Knolls lead by two. Yeah, again, Kerr kind of trying to see if we can replay from the early in the game, but you see she gets that ball through. And Belvi gets just up under that tag. Again, that ball beat her to home. I think she hesitated as she was rounding third. But luckily for her, good slide, and she was able to slide in and give her team an additional run. Mostly 5-3. Her advance to second on the throw home. And that brings up Mac Leonard. Opposite field, but foul. And I know we've talked about the power that the Knowles have kind of provided thus far in the season, but tonight I, I, they haven't really been hitting um, Beasley or Boatwright hard. I mean, it's really been their base running that's, that they've been, been able to scratch some runs across. A few ground balls, you know, quality at bats. Nope, no home runs thus far today, and I think, you know, Coach Orr talked about trying to keep that ball in the park, and her pitches so far have done just that. Ball well outside to make it two and two now to Mac Leonard. And to your point, Tiffany, Florida a &M really did a good job of mixing speeds, giving Florida State a, a real healthy dose of the off-speed pitch. And throwing it on the corners, bottom of the zone as well, in places that even if Florida State did get a swing off, it was going to be difficult for them to do much with it. And for about five innings, that recipe had worked. And now the Seminoles are starting to figure things out. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and again, I highlight because it's, 
one thing to throw a change up, right? But it's another thing to throw that change up for a strike. It completely changes your at bat to know that a pitcher can throw change ups at any point for a strike. So if Beasley was just throwing change ups you, and she wasn't hitting it for a strike, you know as you approach that I don't really have to worry about this change up because she can't throw it for a strike consistently. But Beasley's been able to throw that pitch for a strike and really put that thought of I might have to sit on a, a change up here if you're a Florida State Seminole. Another tremendous play in the outfield. Kerr will tag on it and advance to third. This time it's Mel Kayla Irvis tracking down a ball that a Seminole put a charge into. Yeah, that's a great play right there because off the bat, I definitely thought, I didn't think that was going out, but I definitely thought that that was going to be a double and Irvis literally tracked that down. Um, what a great defense she ran to the spot of the ball. She was able to stick her glove out just in the right time. So, I mean, you see great jump, great angle, which matters. And she was able to track that down and, and take that double. And hey, Leonard even agrees, right? Only thing you can do is tip your hat. That was a great play. Exactly, and still going back to the topic of quality plate appearances, that fly ball to right was deep enough to allow the lead runner, in this case, Kerr, to tag and advance to third, and Florida State now has a legitimate opportunity to go up by three. Yeah, absolutely. So even though Leonard got out there, but that was definitely a quality at bat, and heads up to Kerr. Um, good job for her tagging and not being overzealous there, thinking that Irvis wasn't going to get to that ball, so she read that um, well and was able to move up for her team. Oh. Here's Kaylee Harding. Take your time, take your time. Harding walked and reached on an error. Also flied out to center field. And again, we talked about with Coach R, um, Coach Orr um, at the beginning of this game and talking about how her team has pretty much been in these ball games as they, they face this tough competition. And we've talked about that one inning, and you're seeing it now, this one inning where Florida State Seminoles are putting up a crooked number on the scoreboard. So you really want the Rattlers to refocus, refocus and, and tune back in and, and really focus on one pitch at a time and get out as they come. Four pitch walk issue to Kaylee Harding and another pitching change in store here in Tallahassee. It'll be Nadia Zentno getting the call for the Rattlers. We'll come back to the Seminole Softball Complex in a couple moments. Nadia Zentino checking, checking in for Florida A&M. Runners on at first and third for the Seminoles. It's Harding at first, Kerr on at third. And Zentino takes over here to try to limit the bleeding in the bottom of the sixth. Needs two outs, does the junior from Lake Wales, Florida. And she will face a new hitter for the Seminoles. Chloe Culp now checks in as the DP. Sophomore from right here in Tallahassee. He got bad. And Chloe, we talked about her being from Tallahassee, and she was coming to camps when I was here at Florida State. So I think she had her eyes set at becoming a Seminole. She worked hard, and here she is playing in front of her home crowd. Going toward the opposite field, and that'll be effective to play Janai Kerr. Here you go, Red. 
Here's Devin Flaherty. Put a charge into that ball all the way out to the wall in left. The Knolls are now finding full song here in the sixth. Dion Riggs, the pinch runner, comes in to score. And Devin Flaherty does Devin Flaherty things with a double off the wall. And this is exactly what you want to see. Devin Flaherty comes in, takes that pitch on the outside corner and drives it. I'm not sure. There, drives it to the wall. Good base running. Deion Riggs scoring for the team. And if you're the Seminoles, this is exactly what you want to see. We talk about how they came into the game, maybe a little flat. Um, Coach had mentioned, you know, maybe pressing a little bit, but it seems that they've kind of calmed down a little bit. And I, I like to think that hitting is contagious. <laughs> and Sydney Sherrill's going to keep the party going. Throw comes all the way home. It is offline. Flaherty scores, and on the throw home, Sid Sherrill advances into scoring position. Yeah, I'm right on cue, right? Hitting is contagious. I mean, Sid Sherrill driving that pitch through the right side and, and Devin Flaherty and no hesitation. I mean, it's, it's one out. She does no hesitation. Scoring easily from second. Maya Ross checks in to pinch run now for Florida State. A player that coaches here believe could be the fastest the program has ever seen. Yeah, I saw her run opening weekend. I mean, she is fast. <laughs> she is fast. And that, I mean, Florida State has had some fast players, so. Callie Harrod, Deja Bush, yeah, to name a few recently. Coach Alameda to think that she's the fastest, and, and Callie Harrod was fast, and I know they track time, so I'm excited to see. I, I like speed. I'm a speed girl, you know. So oh, I know you are. I want. I want to see. I want. Let me see you run. Well, you might get a good look at her here. We. You don't know. Here's Kyle Lepresti. Check swing. It goes one and one. Florida State leading eight to three over Florida A&M. A sixth run sixth for the Seminoles who at one point trailed three to two. Ball got away at home and so there's Ross. You didn't get to see the full speed on display. There really wasn't a whole lot of contest there. She didn't have to yeah, hustle too, speed, too much. It I wasn't mean, a full sprint. She got over there very fast. <laughs> she got over there faster than I would have. Yeah. Big swing and a miss there from Kyle Lepresti makes it two and two. Lepresti walked in the second, grounded out to short in the fourth. Ground ball here pulled foul. Right here by Lepresti. I think she comes, she, she generally has some quality at bat. Very good eye. I, mean, I think that's just a nod to her being a catcher. She sees another 3 2 and earns a walk off of it. Second walk for Lepresti tonight. And Brooke Blankenship looks like she'll check in to the lineup here. After a, let's just say, it, a terrific night for Josie Muffley at the bottom of the order, three for three. Batting average up to nearly 800 for Muffley this season. 
Yeah. And now Brooke Blankenship checks in, the freshman who got off to a real hot start to her seminal career with a home run and a 312 batting average to this point this year. Blankenship, the freshman from Hudson, Florida, as most freshmen, undecided on the major. She's here to play softball and get good grades first, and then we'll worry about what we want to do later. Exactly. <laughs> we know we want to play softball for about three more years, <laughs> at least, yeah. <laughs> Blankenship, a player that really, as the story goes, fell in love with this program a year that I think you remember fondly, T. Brown. 2014 was in the house as a youngster when Courtney Sinus put one off the parking deck. To beat Michigan, Florida State needed to win two to make the trip to Oklahoma City after Michigan got out and won game one. And the Seminoles won two on the same day, no less, to punch their ticket to the World Series for the first time in 10 years. Oh my God, I literally just got chills. That's so weird. Oh man, such great memories and uh, you talk about that that Michigan series and losing 17 to three. I'm never gonna forget that. <laughs> the first game, uh, you know, it was a big time. We were just kind of coming, up, getting over the hump. We made it to super regionals the year before, and you know, we had the crowd in and just coming out and absolutely getting blasted by Michigan, beating us 17 to three. Um, and, and Courtney Cenas, um, we we had some stellar defense. Lacey Waldrop, Breezy, um, Hamilton, you know, just out there. We just Grinded it out, Matty O'Brien. I mean, just a heads up to all my former Knowles out there that was on that team with me. So let's go, man. I can just keep going. But some fun memories, and and it's cool to see Brooke Blankenship. I mean, she remembers that and being here, and that's what it's all about. I mean, because right now she she is who these youngsters are looking up to, and you know, putting on that Seminole jersey. I mean, I think that's what it's all about. It's all part of an ongoing process, and they preach the process here. And, you know, a lot of programs do. The players here, they don't just buy in. They take pride in the process and delivering through that process as Blankenship earns the walk off the full count. And it's a process that, as our crew just showed the folks at home, had led them to that national championship in 2018, the regional in 13, the super regional appearance in 13 getting to OKC for the first time in 10 years in 14, getting back in 16, making it to the semifinals. And then the coulda, woulda, shoulda year in 17 that a lot of people thought for sure Florida State's gonna get there and it just didn't quite work out. Followed by a year where the Seminoles drop the first one to UCLA and then decide they're not gonna lose another one the entire time they're out there. And then the year where the team that didn't have the power, that didn't have the pop, that didn't have the average that the other teams had offensively, but had a whole lot of speed and a whole lot of heart, nearly beat Oklahoma to win it all for the second time in three seasons. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you talk about the process, and that's just the culture that Coach Alameda has breeded. Starting from Coach Graff, she loves to um, really give props to those who came before us, and there are a lot of great Seminole players out there um, that have built this pro program up brick by brick um, to get to where we are today, to, to become, you know, the number three team in the nation and, and really have that winning culture. And, I mean, just continue to bring in players. You see Kat, Catherine Sandicott there, um, continue to bring in great players to just keep the Seminoles up at the top. Belvai ripped one to first, and Boatwright makes another tremendous play over at first. The Seminoles lead, however, is five. Do or die time for the Rattlers. To the tune of Footloose, Florida a and staying loose in the visitors' dugout. And so too is Florida State. We're trying to stay loose as well. Sean Davis and Tiffany Brown, our entire crew on hand here at the Seminole Softball Complex. Great crowd on a Wednesday night here in Florida's capital city, a crosstown showdown between the Rattlers and the Seminoles. A game, Tiffany, in which Florida A&M had the lead early and they had it all the way up until the bottom of the sixth. And we see it time and time again in baseball and softball, whether it's the sixth or the eighth inning respectively, 
the home team that might be the favorite, in this case Florida State was, falls behind, the road team plays their hearts out, builds up a lead, and then late the home team figures some things out. And just as quickly as you were leading, you now find yourself, if you're FAMU, with your final three outs. Yeah, it's, uh, it's unfortunate, you know, um, but hey, that's just how the ball game yep. rolls. And I mean, it's a lot that can happen in three outs, I will say. Um, you know, obviously with Florida A&M, you, you talked about, I mean, they've, they've been playing a great game. And we talked about with Coach Orr before just that one inning. And it's just that one inning, um, for the most part, where the Seminoles made some adjustments and were able to score some runs and actually take the lead there. And so the Noles, uh, they did a great job offensively. And if you're on the flip side for the Rattlers, you want to see them compete, get some base runners, get them on. Move them over and get them in. Tough challenge, though. They're facing Catherine Sandler College. A swing and a miss to start for Anasia Vargas. Did reach on a fielder's choice in the fourth. FAMU going 7 8 9 to start here in the top of the seventh. And quickly 0 and 2. Vargas, a player who's been a staple on the left side of the infield at second and third for the Rattlers, has also seen time as the DP. Takes a look at ball one. Yeah, and if you're Florida State and with Catherine Sanderclock, Sanderclock there coming in, she knows she's exactly where she wants to be, you know, facing the bottom lineup, having to deal with the 7 8 9 instead of. One, two, three, or three, four, five for the last three outs. So she wants to attack just like she's doing. Go right at the hitters and see if she can work a one, two, three inning and close out the game. A good take by Vargas on the one, two to make it two and two. And she's run up for the strikeout looking. Catherine Sandercock comes in on the right-hander Vargas for her fourth strikeout of the night. That was a nasty pitch right there. I, I saw it like start in the middle of the plate and break in. So just a tough take right there for Vargas and unfortunately a strike three for her. Desiree Beecham. Struck out in the second, popped up two second in the fourth. One and one to Beecham player who has checked in of late and earned some starts in the outfield left and right respectively for Florida A&M. Ground ball snared by Sandra Cock, two down. Very smooth right there off the mound there in Sandra Cock. And we hear a lot about PFP pitching, pitchers fielding practice, and that's something that the Seminoles take pride in here with our pitchers. Coach is very big on our pitchers being athletic, and you saw that in Sandra Cock hopping off the mound very quick to field that ground ball. And so here is Mia Blassen game. The center fielder who's come away with a couple of web gems, recorded a hit back in the fifth, and has really been a jolt of electricity for us all. She gets the final say so, it would appear here in the top of the seventh and in this game. Quickly 0 and 1 to the center fielder. Oh, and 
two. And after struggling and trailing, the Seminoles are officially on the doorstep of going 11-0 to start the year for Team 39. O2, got her, and that'll do it. The Seminoles win it 8-3 over a gritty Florida A&M team from across town who led into the sixth here tonight in Tallahassee. Tiffany, the Knowles find a way. It is their longest start.